What's up guys, this is CZG Sam here, and in today's video, I got an Invoke Dogmatic, a Shadal Dual Replay. Um, so it's pretty much just the best of three worlds uh, by combining all the decks together. They pretty much um, counter each other's weaknesses pretty well and uh, work play to each other's strengths pretty well as well. So uh, if you guys like the video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel because it really helps keep me motivated to keep posting uh, videos. Make sure you have that notification bell on as well to get not instantly notified whenever I upload new videos so yeah uh, without further ado let's begin so starting off I lose the die roll and I'm forced to go second uh, I'm actually playing against uh, Unchained and before you guys like just say oh it's a scrub rogue deck like it put up like a surprising fight like I was very very surprised at how like resilient this deck was like because all their guys float and they, they can, he can play on my turn very very well she just does some standard Unchained plays at this point, I don't really know what's going on. I only know that is uh, this guy is kind of like a quick effect um, link with my guy into something else, which I was like, oh, okay, that's whatever. He gets a pop one as well. I didn't really mind though because I had meltdown. Meltdown is just super powerful because uh, another the other effect of it, uh, other than adding Alistair, obviously is is when a, your fusion monster summoned, your opponent can't actually uh, activate effects. So like if I shit off using an app clone and build the chain link, he actually can't chain soul uh, soul of rage because of meltdown. Uh, so app clone was just able to negate it, and then he can't really do anything. He doesn't trigger his whaling, but he still has a, a floater in Rakea, which I'm about to find out very very soon that this deck uh, floats a lot. So I shit off fusion. Uh, I do the app clone play. I, I send a Ariel instead of Wendy because I want to trigger the Wendy in my hand with the shell fusion. Uh, add a beast off of the hedgehog, and then I make a construct as well. Um, the neat thing about this deck is I can fuse away Ecclesia freely because I'm able to bring it back with two types of cards. I can bring it back with Cross Sheep or with the Selene I play in my extra deck. So, like, it doesn't really matter if Ecclesia hits the grave, I'm always able to bring it back if I really want to. So, at this point, I just dump a Schism because I plan on linking these away in uh, main phase 2 to set up like Schism, Resh, and Elstral fusion on my opponent's turn, plus the Nadir Servant. So, like, he probably won't be playing out of that. So he summons his Soul of Disaster. Uh, at this point, I didn't know they had a card like this. So I blindly attacked him to it. Because I thought he'd just float into another copy of uh, Aruha. Kill that. Float into another copy of Rakea. I'm like, okay, whatever. At least it did his deck out. But he actually summons Disaster. So not only is it big. But it also lets him immediately uh, link summon a Dark Link monster. Using only that, uh, using this card and my monster uh, as material. Which is just really... <sighs> pretty good considering he can float into it so like he does this in the battle phase uh he lets it go though um construct he, he just brings back rakea so like uh yeah pretty annoying like as you can see he just starts floating 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 uh main phase two I make a cross sheet add schism off of uh app clone and uh i add rash sorry i add schism off of uh what's it called construct add rash off of um uh shoot i mean actually <laughs> i add um i had in incarnation for my deck uh, i apologize I, I, guys i don't know why i had like a brain fart there uh add schism back with contract and then i have a nadir servant to send elder entity ents i want to ents away his rakea because uh he wouldn't be able to use he already uses his effect this turn and if i just destroyed his rage he'd just be able to add back a free resource i wanted him to not draw another unchained monster to link so like he could just keep this on the board. I don't really care because I'm playing on his turn. Uh, add a punishment. So like yeah, I have punishment, rash, and uh, schism, which is just really really good. And cross sheep's bringing back anything I want. So I can bring back another ecclesia if I really wanted. Obviously I don't have any more targets in my deck because I only play one fleur de lis and uh, one punishment. But whatever, still free monster for uh, cross sheep. He just scoops it up. And we go into game two. So now this game gets a little crazy. Uh, he pulls up with some crazy tech I've never seen before, like Dark Spirit Advance. But you guys are gonna see this card is actually fire in uh, Unchained, like surprisingly good. Like it, it pretty much like obliterates me. Uh, and he's gonna do some um, some nasty combo on me uh, later on. So he does the standard Unchained plays, uh, makes his guy and just passes with Escape of the Unchained. But I have a Cosmic Cyclone which I can just use to banish. Manage. So like now I'm pretty much uh, in my mind I'm like free rolling because I have uh, meltdown and shit all fusion once again So I absolutely negate this and plus I have the Alistair mecha bow play if he has an additional hand drum So like, at this point I think I'm so safe. I can't really get hit by anything. He chains doesn't matter to me I make a mecha bow 
uh, add back Alistair, resolve shit all fusion, do the do the construct play this time because uh, this actually isn't a quick effect. So I was like, whatever, I don't really I don't really care about it. Do my construct play. Um, at this point, I was just be not playing uh, to preserve resources because I figured I had a game. Um, so normally you wouldn't see me dump like uh, incarnation to flip up Ariel just to get an extra body on board off the of Skomata. So like. I only did this because I needed to um, link these guys away into a cross sheep and then link the uh, add back fusion of force, link the cross sheep and Skomata into uh, into Selene. This card is incredible in this deck because all your Shadows are spellcasters. So, like, if you bring something back off, off cross sheep, you get are pretty much guaranteed to have three spells in total, like, including your opponents. And you just get ba back a free uh, spellcaster. So, like, at this point, if I really wanted to, I could have brought back uh, Ecclesia Surge. But like I was going for games, so I was bringing back um, Squamata, and then making an access code talker that's 5300. So at this point, I just I pop this guy. He adds back Sarama. I'm like, okay, I really don't care. Then I thought he was gonna add back Unchained Soul, and then on resolution, uh, activate Unchained Soul, and then I'd be forced to negate that with Mechaba. Then he probably could have destroyed me with like the Nibiru and Gamma. But like in the battle phase, like honestly, I did not see this coming. So I, I hit him for 53. And I'm like, Mechaba attack. I was thinking maybe he doesn't know I can Alistair damage step. Uh, so I, go, I attempt to go damage step, but he actually um, does the Dark Spirit of Banishment Force. So I, I'm reading this, and it lets him summon something back from the graveyard. Its effects are negated and change the attack target to it. I'm like, oh, whatever. I'll just negate it with Mechaba, right? Because I'm like, oh, he's probably just uh, uh, stalling. And he gammas my Mechaba. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this guy's everything. Um, get, brings the Unchained Soul back. I do get Alistair back because uh, we never did go into damage step. Uh, this is right before damage step. And I'm pretty much just forced to pass because I made a play that I thought would be the best. I thought I had game. Uh, so I went for it. Otherwise, I would have set up like Schism or whatever. I just really did not expect uh, the Dark Spirit of Banishment, like the Battle Fader esque effect. It's just crazy, honestly. Top decks, uh, you know, he does top deck. He top decks MST, which is funny because that's actually going to become huge later. Uh, and then he brings, he, um, Brings back Aruha, pops it, some Unchained Soul Disaster. Disaster on my, uh, pretty much on history, he's allowed to use my Access Code Talker as material, which is just in, like honestly incredible. And he gets the Direct Street Urban Banishment back because it just has to have that effect when something is sent to the grave, you add it back to your hand. So I have to deal with it again. And I'm down to 700. So like now I'm, I think I'm in the danger zone. I can't use Cosmic Cyclone and uh, I almost die because I'm on 700, as you guys will see later on. Top deck Ecclesia, which is pretty good, but honestly, I I just go for Shadow Fusion to try to uh, kind of force out the rage again, do the meltdown protection play because I uh, I, I have a in my mind I'm like I'll just Alistair um, for for Purgatrio and just force out like the Spirit of Banishment. Just doesn't matter at that point. I would just Purgatrio his whole board and win. Um, I don't have that many Shadal targets in my deck, so you guys are gonna see a summon a hedgehog may seem a little weird, but I don't have Shadal targets in my deck, so I kinda have to. Uh, invocation away his Aruha for Purgatrio, and now I'm just thinking I definitely have game, it does not matter. Special Ecclesia at Fleur de Lee, and I am uh, uh, not, not very smart. I played directly into the Nibiru. I definitely did not have to, so I would have had one two three four summons with the alistair normal and it still would have been game so honestly that was my fault i just didn't know what his set card was i thought his set card might have been something that um popped my Purgatrio, trio like the uh the thing from this thing yeah escape the unchained i was thinking if he just pops my Purgatrio, trio i won't have enough damage but if i summon a flare to lee i will have enough damage so like that's what that's what i was thinking at the time obviously i def i didn't realize yet the nibiru um, because he had one unknown in his hand at this point, I was like, oh, I just didn't think of Nibiru. So honestly, a uh, huge blowout. Uh, thankfully, the token is very, very big. It's like over 10k attack and 10k defense. It's pretty ridiculous, actually. I grab a schism off of the apple, and I'm like, at this point, I still don't really care um, if he top decks a unchained monster because I can just make a window or... Um, make a construct on my on a uh, history and just gain resources from there because schism's just so good and then this guy flips mst in the end phase and I, at this point i was i was getting i was like uh, it's getting a little silly now because he had nibiru he had the gamma banishment he had mst for my schism as well so like at this point i'm just like oh my goodness like well, what can i even what can i even do uh also um 
it was kind of smart for him to set this because by setting this, he kind of gave me the impression that uh, this was not an Unchained monster. He, I thought he taught deck like a hand trap, like Ash Blossom or something, and just set it so he didn't die. But like, I figured if he had an Unchained monster, he would just normal it, turn Nibiru and the Unchained into the level Link Two guy, and then on my turn, uh, just link away, uh, just link away the token and and kind of just hope to survive from there. So honestly, I think it was definitely better to set Rakia because I have to deal with it, and if I I have to deal with it, and it'll float into uh, something else, which is crazy. So I topped like a dead Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, I have Alistair for Invocation, um, Hedgehog at uh, El Shadal Fusion. Uh, here I make a pretty um, pretty bad misplay. Uh, what I what I should have done is uh, after I summon Algoides and use the effect to pop the set, and I. Once I realized it's a Rakea, I should have chained the Elshadal Fusion for Hedgehog and Invoker into Winda. So no matter what he summons, he's locked into that one special for the whole turn, and his Dark Spirit of Banishment is dead. So like at that point, I definitely, um, I definitely would have had game for sure because Winda swings over this, uh, Algoidi swings over this, and Token just swings for over like 12k. So definitely uh, my fault. Um, I misplayed. I didn't see it at the time. Um, invocation it back at Alistair. And I realized at this point I could have done that play. So I was, at this point I was just like, whatever. Uh, Agoides, um, Agoides effect uh, gain uh, 2500, so it's 4500. Uh, Hedgehog swing over Nibiru, and then El Shadal now. So I'm like, it literally does not matter now if he Dark Spirits of Banishments uh, something back. Uh, make a window swing, and he Dark Spirits of Banishment. And apparently, like I, I don't know if um, it it automatically redirects the attack. So like I. I don't know if I should have lost, but like when when he, uh, I'm very lucky here. This guy was lenient, and uh, he didn't like strike me for this because I I said okay to the target, but like I didn't realize I would die, so like I, I just hastily say Alistair afterwards. Obviously, if I was playing optimally, the game would have been um, over earlier if I just summoned Winda earlier. But like at this point, I just give Winda a thousand, so I don't die. Beat over it, I beat over his guy, and yeah, just swing over it with a Goiti. So actually, quite um, uphill battle for me. But I hope you guys are able to see the power of all three engines combined, the consistency of the invoked engine, the the power of the uh, Shadal engine, and like the versatility of the um, of the Dogmatica engine. Because the Dear Servant, you could send like Elder Entity ends off of it. You can search a pop or a negate, which is just really really good. So yeah, if you guys want to see the profile, let's try to get this video to 25 likes, and I will try uploading it within the next week. I prefer to wait a little because um, I want some cards in the mail. I don't really want a proxy card, so stay tuned for that. Be sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Once again, please remember to leave a like and uh, turn on the notification bell so when I do upload the deck profile, you guys will be able to see it. But yeah, uh, that's all I have to say, uh, and uh, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching once again, and I will see you soon. If you guys want the cheapest Yu-Gi-Oh cards on the market in Canadian dollars with free shipping to Canada, then be sure to check out my eBay page in the description below.